Hi there, guys. How are you guys? You guys. You guys are always up to something. And that's why you're the best. Why not be up to something? And are you up for something? Anything, really. Are you up for anything? What about down? Please don't be down. Unless you're down for anything. In that case, go for it. Up and down, down and up. Continuously. Alternating. Why not both at the same time? Let's gonna leave a mark. Speaking of Mark, how are you, Mark? It's been a long time since I've heard from you. Did you hide my news feed on Facebook? Have you unfollowed me on Twitter? Have you been up to something? When was the last time you were down for anything? Riveting questions, and we need to know. Speaking of knowing, you know what we've been up to? Well, I'll tell you. We've been listening to Made of Things. But not leaving nearly enough comments on iTunes. But please only leave positive comments. We're definitely down for positive iTunes comments. Those will make us go up. Destination unknown. Location not so clear either. So welcome to Made of Things. I'm Antonio Maria Correa, the host of the show. Uh, well, this week we have something a little different. Uh, the show this week has three parts, and we will be starting off with what I should say is the honor of having Gerard Way on the show, formerly of My Chemical Romance. You probably already know this. Um, he is one of the biggest names I've ever interviewed. But before we get to that, there's something I need to explain. I do interviews in person and sometimes you catch someone who's on tour and does not have a lot of time. So big names such as Gerard tend to have about a 10 minute limit, sometimes 15 minutes. And this is exactly what happened. So what you're getting here is the full interview of something I've already posted as a video interview up on YouTube. So if you're listening to this and are a fan of his, you might be listening to a lot of what already is available on Online, but I thought it would be great to have the full interview here on the podcast. With that being said, Gerard was lovely to talk to, but as far as I remember, he was also uh, very visibly concerned with putting on a great show, which it was in the end. So, fans of My Chemical Romance, if you haven't seen Gerard live with his new band yet and are wondering if the shows are any good, there's really nothing to worry about. The guy is as on form as I think he ever was. So, Gerard and I got to talk about several things and cartoons as well, so that was a particular treat. But I do want to stress that I do want the podcast to be the most uh, podcasty it can be in the sense that I do want it to run as long as it can and uh, hold conversations for about an hour or 45 minutes because I do want to bring you guys something special uh, as if you were having some one-on-one -on -one time with the guest of the show. So I hope that in the future I get to talk to Gerard again to a much greater length than I already did this time. But it was already a great chance for me and it was definitely me meaningful to have him tell me I said some stuff to him that no one had ever said so that was fun and um, and even just hanging out with the guy was was, was was cool so with that out of the way let's go straight to my convo with the awesome Gerard Way I like to think sometimes, even from a bad review, you could. You know, we're, we're just on. <laughs> Basically. Oh. Okay, sure. Okay, I like to, I like to think sometimes that even from a bad review, you could learn something from it as an artist, if it's written in a certain way. Sometimes you can tell when a review reviewer simply just doesn't like the person oh. they're reviewing, and you don't really learn anything out of that. But but having said that, all the reviews have been very positive. So. Um, and sometimes in a positive re review you can learn something about yourself. Like I learned um, this one writer had written about my record and I learned about all these influences I didn't know I had, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> That's a, a, a new way of uh, getting to know new music, I guess. Right, yeah, through reviews of your album. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. 
while we're on the album, Hesitant Alien, what is the, the alien hesitant about? Um, you know, it obviously refers to me being very hesitant in the public eye in terms of showing, I think, you know, once you're band, once you're in a band and you're just a group of guys and you're like a gang and then all of a sudden you get very big, you're forced into these situations that feel very alien to you and like things like the red carpet and being on some shows on MTV that were like geared towards very young kids and that kind of happened all over the world to us while being this very aggressive band mm -hmm. um, and it never really goes away does it um, I don't I that don't feeling I mean no it doesn't the feeling doesn't go away like you're always kind of you know, one of the few places I feel like nor normal or, mm -hmm. or at home is on stage or in my own home. I don't really feel normal in airports or in the streets or anything. Mm -hmm. I get it. Okay, okay, okay. I interviewed Ray uh, back in 2007. Okay. Uh, so in, 2000, in 2007, I guess, uh, My Chemical Romance played at Coliseum over here in, in Lisbon. Mm. And uh, I remember it being like the closest thing I've ever imagined Beatlemania being. Right. So, because it, it was hysterical. Like, yeah. the crowds were like beyond anything I've ever I'd ever seen. I was like levitating while, while I was watching the show. And uh, what, was it always like that with My Chem shows? Once, once... Uh, uh, MCR hit a certain level it was always like that it was and I, and I think any any band that hits that point with a young audience it's it's I don't think that experience is any different from any band that's ever uh, struck a chord with the youth oh. like that like I think it was exactly the same for the Beatles as it was for Menudo or uh -huh. I think I don't think it changes I think it's just as jarring uh -huh. and um, or One Direction now for yeah or One Direction or any, any of those bands I think it's exactly the same it's uh -huh. very jarring it's very hard to understand uh -huh. Um, but there aren't that many bands, I mean, that go through that, I guess. I guess not. I guess not, you know. Um, but it was, you know, it definitely it definitely put us through our paces, so to speak, you know. It definitely put us through a lot. And it was it was ultimately positive. Uh -huh. Awesome, awesome. And yeah. it allows you, it opens a lot of doors for you for, for the future, right? Like It can open doors, it can close doors, you know. Um, well, you know, once you achieve that with a with a, a youth youthful audience it closes other doors for mm -hmm. you you know that may have been opened if you, well, luckily the beatles are probably the only band that ever beat it they were the only band to ever appeal to a young audience and then all of a sudden be making really artsy music that was enjoyed by grown-ups it's very hard to make that shift i guess robbie williams did that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um uh, but it is, it is, so other doors can also close for you. Sure. But then again, your fans, uh, as yourself, get older, and then there's, like, uh, how can I explain this well? With, with your fans getting older as well, uh, how do you see them, your longtime fans? Do, uh, are they still that intense? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know that maybe they're 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 passionate about the music still you know my chem, my chem was one of those bands which was 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 able to speak to an older audience as well um and now as a solo artist i'm able to speak to some longtime fans of mcr and an older audience and um but the longtime fans they 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 feel like they're just happy to be watching art the, uh -huh. uh, they're they're very artistic. That's the best way to describe what when, when I think of a an MCR fan or a fan of my music or somebody that's a long term fan. They're all they're all ex expressive and they're all either writers or artists or or they just have a job that they en enjoy creativity through or something. Some of them are just you know vets. Some uh -huh. of them just deal with animals like uh, they're all very positive people though awesome you know? awesome that's really that must be really cool to have like to see your fans being cool people yes right? it is very cool to see your fans being cool people like when you meet your favorite artists and they're also they're also cool people it's the same right it actually is that's the first time i've ever heard that but it is almost as important it is as important as an artist to meet a fan that's cool like you know when you're nervous to meet them just like they're nervous to meet you and you're like oh please be cool you know, mm -hmm. um, do, do you think you still you still you have it in you to like make this huge operatic work piece of uh, piece of work uh, in terms of music? I mean, yeah, I do. I, I think it's just a matter of uh, if I want to. Uh -huh. You know, um, I, I it's one of those things. There, when I did Black Parade, it was 
what I really wanted to do at the time and the way I wanted to do it and, and go heavy on the concept and things like that. And, you know, one day I may want to do that again, you know, and, and explore those things maybe on the next record. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it, it's feeling like the next one wants to be slightly conceptual, but I don't know if it'll be operatic. Uh-huh. You know? Sure. Okay. Okay. But uh, you suggested that. So uh, it always always struck, you know, is struck something in me like this guy's going this way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and I've always told stories. Mm -hmm. You know, even Hesitant Alien, I feel, tells a story, and it's not a tight concept record or anything, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at heart, I'm a storyteller, and I try to do that through my comics or my art or my music. Mm -hmm. Well, it's well documented the, uh, your history with uh, with the com with comics and cartoons. What are your favorite cartoons right now? Um, I I I think of the ones that I watch with Bandit, and we really like Regular Show. Mm -hmm. We watch that oh. together. It's it's it seems like it's kind of for more grown ups, but. But uh, it's it's a fairly innocent show, and uh -huh. that, that's what I like about it. And obviously, a lot of grown-ups watch it, but I can watch it with my daughter. So I think I th I'd say regular show is okay. is okay. really fun to watch with her. Sometimes we watch Adventure Time. Um, Adventure Time is really up the the the, the antic, right? Because I'm really into Adult Swim. Like, yeah. uh, okay, so all the the yeah. uh, the old the, the ten years ago stuff. You know, I we used to watch it all. Right. But I really feel, and I'm I was huge on Ren and Stimpy. Uh, but uh, I really feel like Adventure Time is r really, you know, especially with later seasons, it's really yeah. gotten insane, right? It, it has. It's gotten a lot stranger. I was just having a conversation on Twitter with somebody because we both saw an episode that we thought that they were suggesting that Finn lost his virginity in the oh. episode. And we're pretty sure that's what they were trying. <laughs> Even if yeah. they weren't trying to imply it, it's definitely what they implied <laughs> in the episode. Sure. And we were like, this show's gotten pretty weird. Oh, so Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, we, yeah, as, as a fan, as a as a as a cartoon fan, uh, mm -hmm. is it something like you know, it makes you happy inside? Like someone's pushing the boundaries and stuff. Sometimes, yeah, uh, it can make me happy. <laughs> If you're watching it with your five-year-old, doesn't make you so happy, but oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course, no, no, inappropriate. No, I I, I I like anything that that. I like Adventure Time. I like things that push boundaries. It's cool. Like it's uh, she's obviously too young to understand what's going on in a situation like that, but um. And probably argue, arguably people could say, well, you shouldn't let your five-year-old watch Adventure Time anyway, but she's, uh, she likes adventure and she's smart. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. there you go. Okay, so Millions. Mm -hmm. Is it like a love letter? No, I wouldn't say it's a love letter. Um, it, it, it just reminded me of high school. Mm -hmm. It just sounds like oh. it's about high school really? to me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, it sounds like it's about high school and discovery. And it's real. I mean, it's about quitting, you know? It's about, like, saying I quit as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you this? This is not a question, but were you ever referred to? Did anyone ever at any point? Did anyone ever refer to you as Way Cool Junior or Gerard Way Cool Junior? Gerard Way Cool. Uh, Because of the rap reference, there's a song, glam rock song. Oh no, I, I've never had that. No. Could have, could have been something. I, I mean, know. somebody could have said it, and I would have not I have no idea what they were saying. But behind your back. Yeah. <laughs> or something. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine. This is to, this might be totally inappropriate, but a friend of mine, um, who's a longtime fan of yours, said uh, I might be interviewing Gerard Way like Gerard Way like tomorrow, and she said, Oh, I always thought he, thought he would be a very kinky person. Oh, Are wow. you? Oh, jeez. Um, I can't really answer that. Um, <laughs> sure. I wouldn't know if I was. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. I wouldn't know. I I don't okay. know. I don't know what's weird. <laughs> you know. Sure, sure thing, man. Thanks, Thank man. You. Thank you. And enjoy the tour. And it's a new pleasure. And Thank you. I hope to see you again sometime soon. All right. Thanks, man. No problem. So that was my talk with Gerard Way. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, on the second half of the show, we have something very different, not just slightly different. Um, if you've heard the second episode of uh, Made of Things, you heard me talk about some of my experiences at Primavera Sound in Barcelona this year. Uh, one of my personal highlights was meeting and engaging with uh, Tori Amos. It was a brief encounter, but we got to talk personally, and she gave me a hug in the end. Uh, it's uh, Uh, still a bit mind-blowing to me and probably always will be that someone whose uh, music I grew up with and someone who meant so much to me when I was a teenager ended up talking to me and uh, giving me hugs like 20 to 25 years later. Uh, I've had this happen a few times in my lifetime with 
artists I love and this is something that doesn't usually happen to anyone as far as I know so I'm aware of uh, how lucky I am to have gotten to live these moments you know but Tori gave a small and intimate press conference uh, in which I got to ask her a couple of questions before we went outside and talked for uh, briefly, you know, for a few more minutes. So the reason I'm posting this is that obviously she's not a guest here on the Made of Things podcast, but since podcasts are whatever you want them to be pretty much, and the feeling I got from the whole press conference thing was that we had already uh, engaged in a meaningful way, I'm putting this up as the second half of this episode so honestly the the feeling I got and I think I was certainly not the only one there who felt this way uh, was that we were in the presence of someone truly special and artistic and uh, whose emotions are on surface level pretty much all the time to a point which Tori really felt like a magical being and I really can't imagine her not being this way ever because she was like that during the press conference, outside of it, and on stage too. So it was always the same person, you know, with the same attitude and posture and stance and uh, and uh, whole the whole feel of Tori was the same always. And um, okay, and another thing is that the audio quality here isn't brilliant since it was a press conference. I don't really like press conferences, but I'm I don't it's a, it's kind of a privilege not to have to do press conferences all the time. So whenever they happen, it's usually for a good reason and something good comes from there. So the audio quality isn't perfect, but I still hope it is worth your time as a Tory fan. So um, there we go. Here are my two cents, but um, very meaningful and heartfelt cents, for that matter, with uh, Tori Amos in Barcelona. OTF uh, with Mark Barron, this is a famous podcast, and uh, there was a wrestler there called McFoley. He's, uh, uh, I, I think you know him, and, uh, and uh, yes, he, he, is he a dear friend then? I adore him. So he was telling me, like, the first time he met you, you hugged him, and it said, it, it, he said it changed his life. And uh, so, are you aware of the Tori Amos uh, hug? Oh, the power yes, totally. of Amos. Well, let me, he changed my life because he's a wrestler, right? And my young nephew thought I was pretty cool, that um, he's a huge wrestling fan. So the fact that Mick Hall, uh, Mick is a giant. And so it was. it's a little bit shocking at first when you're gonna give a big guy a hug, you don't realize, okay, but my arms don't wrap around this beautiful giant of a man. But such a giant and such a, uh, such a deep soul. Can I ask one more? Yeah, of course. Okay, what does it, what does it mean to give it your all? Uh, as an artist, to you? Oh, interesting question. Hmm. Okay. So, I guess, if I'm honest with you, you know that saying, chop wood, carry water? There's something about, I think, being a writer, being a songwriter, any kind of writer, and you all are writers, so you all should know this, I think it's very difficult to write things. I found it, I can only speak for myself, if, if I'm not connected to um, the, the real, real people. So for me, the idea of, you have to keep putting yourself as a writer in situations, I feel, whether that's traveling or exposing yourself. As a musician, what you really, really have to do more than anything is listen. And that means right now I'm talking your head off. But um, normally, I'd rather be listening because that's where you get, well, that's where the muses are. That's their, they're telling you, listen to what he's saying to you. This is a story. This is a song. You, you didn't know this 10 minutes ago. And so as a musician, um, I guess listening has been something that, uh, I don't know, I've had to learn to do. And when you say give it your all, that really means all the time. So you're not an artist. 
I disagree with people that say it's a job. I think it's a privilege. Um, and I think as, as an artist, you do have a responsibility. And what is that? It's different for different artists. But, um, I don't know. I think it's a privilege. Okay, so I know that was a bit short, but that was Tori Amos, you know, so I had to. Uh, I was uh, kind of shaking in my knees during the uh, during the uh, press conference and while I was asking the questions, but, um, you know, I never really get that. I never really get starstruck, uh, even from the be beginning, I never really did, because um, they're, you know, they're just people, really, but very special people, but still people, uh, ultimately, and they enjoy artists i mean uh artists enjoy being treated as human beings you know not you know not everyone is kiss guys even kiss i'm just teasing even kiss probably just like to hang out and stuff even though they did movies in which they were technically superheroes not really implied it was very you know very clear that they flew and spit lasers out of their mouths but uh okay but um still i was speaking about being starstruck and uh there's only been a couple of times in which this has happened uh one time i met the uh dalai lama and uh i, I know and i was going to interview him uh again i know uh and uh, this ended up not happening at all uh, but i was quivering for days i think that's the word quiver um i'm not going to interrupt this and check the dictionary but uh, i was really really you know very tense for a few days be because it's such a responsibility you know but i ended up only greeting him uh and uh, still man that was uh, nuts you know and the other time I got starstruck was when I met uh, Robert Nero. Uh, I got to shake his hand too, also did a press conference and asked him, I don't know, pretty good questions I think. And um, we got to exchange a couple of words in the end, very briefly. Um, still, you know, both times, that was I was pretty starstruck afterwards, so that was pretty crazy on both accounts. But in my lifetime, I've also interviewed people I really deeply love, such as Danny from Tool, the guys from Mastodon, Adrian Blue from King Crimson, and Steve Hackett from Genesis, and John Anderson of Yes, and uh, Lou Barlow, and I know, uh, John Spencer, I mean, so a bunch of people, and I don't know, I'm just very lucky, I guess. Uh, I, I, I'm probably boring, boring you with this. Um, my phone just just vibrated. Okay, so now we get to the third and final part of this episode of Made of Things. So yesterday I got to talk for a bit with Alvaro Covões, who runs what uh, probably is the biggest music festival in Portugal, and one of the biggest music festivals in the world, which is called uh, Nosh Alive. And this year's edition is happening in a few days, so I thought it would be cool to have him on the show to talk about what is coming up. So naturally, we spoke in Portuguese, so this is probably where all you English speakers are going to sign off. So it's bye-bye from me to you guys. Don't forget to get on iTunes and subscribe and leave a comment for once in your life. Really, be, you know, <laughs> be responsible. And then next week, uh, I don't know. And then next week, leave another comment for twice in your life as well. Uh, don't forget you can download all the episodes on WordPress at um, Made of Things Pod, which is also the handle on Twitter and the name of the page on Facebook. We're also on Instagram at Made of Things. So thanks for listening. And now we get to the interview, and I could switch to Portuguese now, but who cares? Um, with Albert Couvange uh, speaking about uh, the preview, doing a little preview for the Nosh Alive Festival of 2015. Olá. O Nós Alive uh, é um dos festivais principais na Europa já há alguns anos. Sim. O que é que tem este ano para cimentar essa posição? Acima de tudo o cartaz, não é? O que nos distingue é a oferta. Nós temos mais de 130 espetáculos em apenas 3 dias, temos 6 palcos e temos uma oferta absolutamente extraordinária em cada palco. Cada palco para nós, a nível de programação, é tratado como um palco principal e, portanto, é isso que, digamos, é essa grande, não só a dimensão, mas é isso que atrai o grande público. Uhum. 
dentro dos nomes que tem, que tem este ano, há algum que, que olhe para ele e, e faça pensar que estamos a fazer as coisas bem? Ah, obviamente que naquele primeiro dia os Mios, que foi o grande responsável por termos esgotado já há mais de um mês, portanto um mês e meio antes do, do, da data já não havia bilhetes, mas acima, há tantos, sei lá, acima de tudo, às vezes são as bandas mais, sei lá, Manfred and Sands, o Sam Smith, Disclosure, o, o, o Chad Faker que entrou, infelizmente entrou a substituir um artista que ficou doente, que foi o Stromae, uh, também, também um, um artista que vendeu... Talvez nos últimos 5 anos não, não tinha havido ninguém a vender tão rapidamente dois coliseus. E de facto significa isso, que muita gente ficou de fora e muita gente vai querer vê-lo. E depois outros nomes como Metronomy, o, o James, James Bay, uh, acreditamos que vai ser um grande nome, já é, mas vai ser ainda maior. O Jesus and Mary Chain, uma banda já, já, já histórica que vem aqui também apresentar um grande concerto, os Flume, os Crómio, o Tiga, também, também os DJs também assumem alguma, nos dias de hoje também são importantes, enfim, são tantos nomes, e portugueses como, como os Ex-Wife, o retorno dos, dos Ex-Wife, os Dead Combo, os HMB, os Blasted Mechanism, enfim, vamos ter aqui ou então uma série de projetos, demos uma noite no clubbing inteiramente dedicada à música portuguesa também, que vai ser boa, com os Molinex, entre muitos outros, portanto... Isto é uma dinâmica de variz. E depois, uma coisa muito importante, um palco comédia, uhum, uhum. com grandes nomes, principalmente o Jean Carrera, o filho não reconhecido da Togani Carrera. Uhum, uhum. Um, já que estamos a falar no palco de comédia, trazem este ano, creio que é a primeira vez um nome internacional, não é? Sim. Pensam vir a trazer alguém uh, anglófono no futuro? Ele é anglófono, só que, só, que porque, só que não fala, porque a arte dele é, ele faz comédia, é mímico, não é? Faz mímica. Mas uh, sim, faz todo sentido, porque nós temos, nós temos mais de 12 mil estrangeiros, portanto já é uma fatia importante do, do, do festival, portanto estamos a falar, são mais de 20% das pessoas são estrangeiras e portanto nós, o palco comédia, o palco Jardim Caixa é um palco que é, é maioritariamente falado em português, o que dificulta a vida para os visitantes, portanto, claro que sim, estamos a equacionar, também juntar comédia em, dita em inglês para que seja mais acessível a toda a gente. Hum, excelente, excelente, uma, ainda bem que estou a pensar nisso no futuro, que acho que é uma coisa que faz falta ao país, por acaso. Há alguém que traga, alguém que traga um, nome, um nome internacional uh, forte? Sim, uh, mas, mas acima de tudo, acho que o primeiro passo que foi dado e é muito importante é dar também palco à, à, à comédia e, portanto, no fundo, ao fim e ao cabo, aos artistas de teatro, não é? Portugueses, nem todos são stand-up, nem todos são só comediantes, são artistas de teatro, que também acho que devem ter um lugar e devemos valorizar uma arte que é tão importante no, no, nestes festivais de música onde estão grandes nomes internacionais e portanto dar essa oportunidade de serem vistos por um grande público jovem também nos parece muito importante e acima de tudo porque criamos um momento de é o, é o palco mais bem disposto no fim do dia é o palco onde nós vamos para rir e eu acho isso fantástico E falou no Stromae há bocadinho pensam trazê-lo de novo? Obviamente, claro, é um grande artista, se pudermos, queremos, nós que tudo o que for bom, tudo o que mexe, nós queremos trazer. Agora, não quer dizer que consigamos, mas, mas pronto, infelizmente ela fez um espetáculo em África, num país africano, no centro da África, e pelos vistos apanhou malária e, e deixou-lhe umas alas e, portanto, teve que cancelar. Está uns meses no, em casa, não é? Em repouso absoluto. Pergunto-lhe se quer fazer algum convite às pessoas para virem ao festival. Sim, primeiro os que já vêm, que de preferência se vierem, venham cedo, porque a música começa às 5 da tarde e começa bem, não temos, não temos bandas para encher chorizos, temos sempre excelentes projetos que começam cedo, portanto ponham um, auto, um, um portanto ao solar em casa, não vale a pena trazer, se vierem muito cedo tragam um chapéu, porque vai estar muito sol e tragam água, ou bebam muitos líquidos antes de virem, porque, porque, para evitar, porque nesta fase inicial, principalmente estas 4, 5 da tarde, é uma, é uma altura em que está muito calor, e portanto para terem, aproveitarem o festival até ao fim, para não terem nenhum problema. De resto, venham com muito boa disposição e aproveitem os, os, cerca, os 136 espetáculos que nós vamos apresentar. Esta vai ser a maior edição de sempre do Alive? Quer dizer, nós, isso já não existe, eu acho que nós já atingimos um, um estatuto, 
o ano passado esgotámos também um dia e tivemos casa cheia nos outros dois dias, portanto o que é que é a maior de sempre é uma coisa que para nós já é bom ser a tão boa de sempre. Eu queria dizer a melhor, mas... Para nós é a tão boa de sempre. <risos> okay. Tá, obrigadíssimo. Obrigado. Obrigado. Foi a conversa breve com o Álvaro Covões. Obrigado a todos por terem ouvido. Sigam-nos nas redes sociais todas, ou, bom, pr praticamente todas, pronto, uh, em Made of Things Pod. Uh, espero, Pod não tem E no fim. Made of Things Pod. Yes, we made a Things Pod. Brilhante. Espero que tenham gostado e voltem para a semana. Vamos ter muitos convidados fixos nos próximos tempos. Portanto, obrigado por terem ouvido e beijinhos a todos nas bochechas. Nessas bochechas fofas. 